aming uh, admin. So the first thing, this is what we're gonna do for the next uh, few days, okay? So today, um, Doc Beck will uh, give the course outline, course syllabus regarding what is QMS all about. And then uh, lesson two, uh, we will start it today para we can start the ball rolling. Tomorrow, Thursday, asynchronous tayo, Joe, that means we are not going to meet, but instead, there is a case study that I want you to read and prepare. Basahin mo yan, dalawa, tatlong beses. On Friday, we are going to meet using the same link, and we are going, I, ako naman ako yung discuss noon, kasi alam ko busy na si Doc Beth. Uh, um, I will do the lesson three, and then the discussion of Rich Carlton. Now, kung available sa Doc Beth, pwede rin siyang sumama sa atin, mag-discussion tayo. Um, so that's how it's gonna be like, Joe, is it clear uh, what's gonna happen for the next few days? Clear po. And then, equally important, uh, itong file na to is actually available online. So I decided to download na para hindi ka namahirapan. This is actually a very, very interesting case because Ritz Carlton Hotel is known for its excellent service. Yeah. Now, um, Doc Beck will uh, start off what uh, history, the meaning, the components. So after having this discussion, I want you to read this case. Very interesting talk. Um, we get to know more about Ritz Carlton and uh, makikita mo kung ano yung how they, how they uh, measure and how they value customer service. So this is just uh, an easy read. Uh, Wag ka ma-intimidate ng 26 pages kasi some of the pages are exhibit. Ibig sabihin, ayan, mga, mga frameworks and ano lang yan. Kasama na yan. Ang actual number of, number of pages lang ng case is 10. Pero basahin nyo rin itong exhibits because these are very, very interesting. Ayan. So if you want to know more about the DNA of Rich Carlton Hotel, especially sa kanilang quality service, ayan. The three steps of service. And then, yan yung mga different steps of service na makikita mo later sa discussion talk, eh? and so and so forth. So, kailangan basahin nyo lahat yan para maintindihan nyo where Rich Carlton comes in. So, again, uh, I would like to say thank you, Doc Beth, for accommodating my request. Yes, Dean. Joe, uh, you are in good hands because uh, tuto kami, lalo pang tutorial, and it is always uh, 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 a pleasure having this kind of subject because this is very, very interesting subject and essential in our program because we always try to deliver or must deliver the light uh, experience para naman uh, our, our uh, customers will be um, uh, patronizing our services, okay? So enjoy your discussion. I will just focus on all my meetings, Kamila. And Doc Pet, thank you so much. Yes, and uh, God bless everyone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh, Joe, you want to open your camera so that you can only have two of them. So that you don't have Doc Pet who is here here. Can you open your camera? Yes, po. Ayan. So that you can open And then, siguro maganda... Uh, John, by the way, are you in Quezon City or saan ka ba? Kainta po, sir. Ay, siguro, ang layo, sir. <laughs> ang layo pala, no? Pero tingnan natin during the, during the tutorial, baka pwede tayo magkaroon ng actual uh, tour. Kahit like, tatlo ni Doc Pet, di ba Doc Pet? Pwede tayo, siguro pwede tayo bumisita sa Nob Hotel and ask mm -hmm. someone to demonstrate how they deliver quality service para meron din tayo immersion sa industry. Uwin natin yun, okay? Yeah. And then, papapakas okay. siyempre natin si uh, Job ng um, case or ng uh, case analysis of report para to synthesize the whole subject. Okay? So, Job, okay. enjoy. Doc Ben, thank you. Yes, I'll be back. Uh, okay. Uh, God bless. Yes, Dean. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you po. Okay. Good morning, Job. Good morning. How are you? Okay. How are you? Okay. Before we start with the discussion of our course outlined at the same time the lesson two um 
of course, we can have first uh, getting to know each other. Okay, I, w- I would like to know, you know, what will be your expectation from the subject and what will be your goal at the same time and what do you want to be after graduation since that you will be graduating okay this summer right and you just only left the quality management system subject okay uh will you be able to introduce yourself and what will be your expectation and what is your plan okay after graduation so i'm good morning to mom and jovia nasiochi and 22 years ago, I'm going to tell that my expectation for her this subject is um, kung ano po, um, um, to know more po yung ano, kung paano yung ano, customer service nga po, um, yung mga ano po sa hotels, yung mga kung paano po nag-work sa hotel, ganun po, and uh, yun po. Okay, uh, by the way, what is your plan? Okay, plan after po. this, ano, summer. Um, after I graduate po, um, ano po, mag apply na po ako for, um, uh, marami pong, ano, mga hotels. I would like to try po. Kasi ayoko rin po mag-stick po lang sa isa. Um, and syempre i-enhance din po yung skill ko um ayoko naman po kasi sumabak din sa work ng walang alam so kaya po rin ako nandito para rin po matuto ang mga dapat din pong gawin para hindi po ako sa job ko na i-take ko po in the future yeah okay thank you so much job okay by the way uh, how do you feel right now <laughs> how do you feel right now <laughs> medyo Excited po. <laughs> ah, excited, yeah. Of course, you know, that will be a good feeling uh, since that you have that positive, okay, mindset. You know, um, I'm very thankful that, you know, Dean already come up, you know, with regards to a case study. And uh, as what the Dean mentioned, that the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, they are known for an excellent service, especially they value employee. Okay, if they value employee, of course, it will transcend on how the employee can give quality service to their client or to their, um, you know, to their stakeholders. Okay, and of course, very motivating as well. That's why that will be also our, you know, uh, eye opener. Since that we are in the hospitality industry, it is a must. Or if we're going to become an entrepreneur soon, it is a must that we always value our employees so that we can have that empowerment. Then our employees, they will be happy serving their empl- uh, their guests, okay, or their specific guests. Okay, that's why if you read with a case study, uh, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, they able to identify a certain budget per employee just to trash out problem. Okay, imagine. Okay, it means that even though that, you know, it was also uh, stated in the different cases of the Ritz-Carlton that imagine they able to spend more money just to solve problem, but at the end of the day, they still have, you know, income. They still have a high income, even though that they spend money, okay, on how they can really uh, value, okay, complaints at the same time, satisfaction, okay, towards on their client or to their guests. That's why there will be also some cases about Rich Carlton Hotel uh, wherein, you know, uh, one guest, uh, very interesting also, and talagang nakaka-motivate if you will be working in the hospitality industry. There was also a certain case about uh, Rich Carlton Hotel that one guest uh he left okay his charger imagine charger lang siya ha ibig sabihin okay in that particular hotel they know that this particular guest going to other country okay my flight siya on that particular day then unfortunately uh the the housekeeper found out that the guest left the charger of his laptop 
Alam mo nung ginawa ng company, the Ritz Carlton Hotel, they delivered, okay, the charger to the next destination. Imagine ganun ka, ano, ka-efficient, okay, ang ano, yung initiative of the uh, Ritz Carlton Hotel. At the same time, you know, they able to also add additional charger. Sabi kasi, uh, there was also a notice na in case, sir, that the charger does not working, you still have another, ano, parang extra charger. Imagine how much should be the cost of, you know, delivering those kind of charger from one place to another. And in fact, mas nauna pa si charger in that particular hotel in the next destination. That's why on that particular guest, talagang he was amazed how Rich Carton do a certain initiative on how they could really have satisfaction in the organization. Kaya nga, yan yung mga, you know, um, the the word of mouth right now and the name of the game is really a, a service you know on how we can make you know um a good service or an exemplary service to our client and that will be part of the service quality management right that's why i was also i mean parang what happened with job bakit hindi mo na take yung subject <laughs> diba? when you were in the second year third year supposedly you will be you already graduated na supposedly but of course you know um maybe it's really a god's plan you know uh we, we able to uh to accept okay if that will be the 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 problem that you, you able to encounter during your you know your school ano parang school um days okay but of course it's okay because you will not able to stop you know, having your formal education, but still, you know, you able to go on and soon you will be graduating this summer. Okay. And of course, uh, before we can start with our lesson two, in fact, there will be several, okay, a PowerPoint for the uh, lesson two because we're going to have a baseline concept about service quality. And at the same time, we have to look into the history, the concept, the definition, what are the different characteristics, the factors that somehow all of this we can use after graduation, especially job if we're going to handle people, if we're going to handle an organization or a certain establishment we're in, you know, uh, we should know on how we can extend service quality to our stakeholder or to our employees. Okay, um, I will share the course outline so that you will able to identify what do we expect or what are the different, you know, topics that we have to discuss in service quality. Okay. Okay, by the way, are you done taking your breakfast? Yes, John. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Okay, we have here. Uh, do you see or is it visible, Job? Is it visible? visible? Po, uh -oh. Okay, we have here, um, of course, the course outline for quality service in hospitality and tourism industry. Our course code, of course, we are using the, you know, old uh, code. Okay, but starting 2023 to 2024, we already have the new code, okay, for the quality service. And the title will be the quality service in hospitality and tourism industry. Okay, the credit or the course credit, it will be purely what? Theory. But of course, uh, it will be also good, okay, if we able to observe what will be the different, you know, um, experiential, okay, um, you know, practices 
okay, of the different establishment pertaining in the hospitality industry. And we also have our independent study wherein, you know, you, you will able to have the research, you're able to have the analysis, wherein we allot 10.8 to 16.2 hours, which will be 20 to 30 percent equivalent to the 54 hours. Then, of course, the placement, uh, this subject is really intended for the first year. Okay, second sem. Okay, and of course, we have here the course description, wherein this course, you know, is enabled to uh, the students to recognize and even assess quality management process. Okay, in a hospitality and tourism related organization and to evaluate departmental processes and planning strategies. If you notice, majority you know, of the hospitality and tourism industries, okay, they gird towards service quality. Because if you will not do that, you know, we can be left behind with regards to the satisfaction or customer satisfaction. That's why it is a must that we have to be aware of what will be those particular gaps that we have to, you know, look into and we have to um, trash out, okay, uh, in our discussion. And of course, the topics includes the concepts and even the terminologies of total quality management. Of course, the definition, the common element and terminology, what will be the vision and reality of service quality, what will be the bridging the gap, or how we could able to identify or make solution or course of action if there will be problem, if there will be complaints, then we can also look into the constructive and critical personal reflection and even on how we could able to, you know, identify or propose quality, okay, by by learning all of those you know um elements and characteristics can we able to identify a certain quality or we can propose quality okay on 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 what we observe in our um environment or in our society of how does the organization implement this kind of protocols or procedures okay we can also look into the self-assessment and even the peers assessment and of course seeking practical feedback for supervisors in continuing improvement developing a personal management philosophy and personal development plan and this course is just only three units subject and three units for the lecture okay what will be our level outcomes okay at the end of the first year given a quality service management in tourism and hospitality students will be able to identify the latest development in the specific field of practice including the functions you know uh, we have to look into the latest development the functions of management the basic components how we can rationalize the concept that underlie of each functional areas of, you know, of our tourism and hospitality business. And even we can also look into on how we can relate and even the roles of hospitality management based on the core competencies to the relevant concepts of quality service management. Then, of course, we can you know move down or we can be more specific with our course learning outcomes we're in at the end of the course and given simulated conditions or situation you know the student should be able to articulate and discuss the latest development in the specific uh, field of practice perform the basic function and even we can also work effectively with other stakeholders and manage conflict in the workplace and even plan and implement business related activities or even we can also exercise high personal morale and ethical standards it means that uh, it always goes hand in hand you know of what will be the right or what is right what is appropriate and what is acceptable and Lastly, we have to plan and implement a risk management program to provide a safe and secure workplace. 
Okay? It means that all of those will be part of our uh, course uh, learning outcomes. Okay? And of course, we have here, okay, since that you are enrolled this summer, okay, you're going to have, you know, if you notice with our schedule, Monday up to Friday. Okay, it, it entails two hours every day. We're in definitely a uh, job. We could able to finish the entire lecture. Okay, before August. Okay, four, definitely. Okay, and today we're going to have our orientation. Okay, we're in, uh, we able to discuss the course requirements, the course outline. And of course, the dean already uh, made some requirements wherein you can have the asynchronous wherein uh, she gave the or he gave the um, a certain case analysis of the Ritz carton okay then of course you can also uh, we can have the perception of the course you can have the you know we also have our major exam okay relevant to our lecture Okay, and of course, the importance of the course in relation to the hospitality management profession, our requirements, and even our grading system. Okay, but of course, still, uh, now we can have our online, you know, instruction. Okay, and later, okay, we will discuss the management principles and its components. Okay, the history of quality from the, you know, the medieval guilds up to the beyond total quality management. We're going to discuss all of those. And there are several, you know, stages, okay, up to the 21st century, okay? We will start at late 13th century. Ano, ano ba yun? Bakit kaya nag-start ang service quality during late 13th century? And it might be beyond 21st century. Okay, and of course, we could able to discuss also the importance in the definition of quality, the principles, practices, and techniques of quality service, the levels of quality, the systems thinking, you know, it really starts, okay, within the organization, okay, because the service quality, it should be the norm of all, you know, uh, workers or employees within the organization from top to bottom. Okay, not only intended for the manager, but all of the people working within the organization should really, you know, work hand in hand in achieving service quality. Then, of course, we can also look into what are those personal values with regards to service quality and the competitive advantage. Then, of course, once that we will able to finish our lesson two, Okay, siguro if we still have time, we can move on the lesson three so that the dean can only discuss the, you know, the details of the uh, case study, okay, on Friday with, with regards to the Ritz-Carlton analysis. Okay, then of course for the uh, lesson three, okay, we have the philosophies and framework, okay, wherein these are the philosophers that they... Um, you know, that they able to uh, identify service quality about Deming, Duran, Crosby, okay, about the National Quality Award, the ISO, the Six Sigma, and even the types of leadership and the leadership theory and practice and even the strategic planning and the management planning tools. All of those geared towards service quality. Then, of course, after that one, the lesson two and three, we can have our prelim. Okay, then uh, for the lesson four, we can focus on customers. Okay, how we can gauge customer satisfaction. How about their loyalty? How about the, you know, how will we know if our employees have a high performance working within the organization? And how we can gauge as well the customer relationship and even the evolution of workforce management, the engagement and motivation, and even designing, managing, and sustaining workforce management and the process management. And even for the lesson five, we can, you know, uh, be more specific on the uh, international quality program. We're in all of these programs. Uh, they, 
you know, the outcome or the output will be service quality. We have the ISO 9000, the Kaizen, the 5S, and the Six Sigma. Okay, then for the lesson six, we're going to discuss... Okay, for the lesson six, we're going to discuss the different nature of services, the trends of any business, how we can go about positioning of our business, how about the service scape in hospitality? You know, how will we know if if our area or if our room is, uh, it might be more on, you know, look into Instra Instagrammable, okay, type. That will be part of the service scape. And of course, we can have the learning concept of the hotel. We are not only doing a traditional one, but we can go out or we can, you know, uh, be more creative and innovative on how we can, you know, make our hotel unique, okay? And even uh, what will be the different benefits and branding, the product life cycle, and even the product mix. Then for the lesson seven, we have here the service quality uh, and effectiveness management, wherein we have to discuss the service sector growth, the components of hotel and hospitality, then uh, what are di the different services and the facilities in order to identify service quality, and even the classifications of boutique hotels, the serve qual model of Parasaruman, then the issues of service quality, and even the service profit chain. Then we can have our midterm. Then for the lesson eight, we have here the quality management and hospitality services, wherein we have to identify what are the components of quality performance management and even the functions of the global competitiveness and the functions of global cities, the issues in cultural economy, the components of urban competitiveness, what you mean by distance decay effect, the three purpose and their demographics and even the issues of quality okay, in the international perspective and even the global strategy to ensure international scale. Okay, then for the lesson nine, now we have here the strategies management in customer service wherein we have to discuss and even define the service, uh, customer service. What are the different strategies the principles in the, uh, delivering customer service, identifying customer, what are the different activities of customer value, the kinds of customer information, okay, w what will be the fibotal information that we have to get, okay, once that we have client, okay, and that particular, you know, um, information, it might also serve, you know, on the part of the uh, of the manager and the supervisor on how they can create, you know, uh, policies, how they can create promotion, how they can create a certain procedure, okay, from the information that we can get from our customer. Then at the same time, we will also discuss, okay, the functions of the customer uh, relationship management and its components. And even we have to design to enhance companies' relationship with clients. What will be the issues of customer relationship management and even the factors? And we are trying also to look into the concept of customer experience and the brand image. And at the same time, you know, the principles of customer focus management and the customer identity. Okay, for the lesson 10, Okay, we have the service management in hospitality. Okay, we have to discuss the background of hospitality service, what will be the managerial duties, the importance of satisfaction, the difficulties relating faith and work in the hospitality and the nature of the industry or our industry. Because, you know, uh, we always reiterate to our students that it is a must that we have the right attitude 
ones that we will be working in the hospitality industry. Imagine, we will be working 9 to 12 hours, okay? It means that it is a must that we really love what we are doing. Once that we have passion on, you know, on our course, definitely you can be successful because you're able to handle all of the struggles, the difficulties, because you have that passion, because you love, okay, on how we can meet other people. Okay, then of course, lastly, we have to discuss the hotel service for overnight rooms, how we can organize delivery room care, and that will be also part on how we can extend service quality. Okay, and of course, we can also identify the high risk delivery or the pre delivery task, the delivery room task as needed, the delivery or the pre delivery counseling, the equipment and the material use uh, issues, or even the benefits of planning and scripting care, uh, especially, you know, the maintenance of the what uh, of the entire hotel or of the entire establishment. Then the availability of room supplies and amenities, the maintenance and care issues in, you know, quality service during pandemic or COVID-19 pandemic in the new normal. Then we can have our final exam. Okay, then what will be our learning environment? Okay, we're in all of the, you know, teaching and learning environment must be contained in the policies, standard and guidelines of CHED. And we are guided in the CMO, okay? Then, of course, we also have our independent. We're in, you know, um, the example will be the case analysis, okay? Then, of course, we have the course requirements, okay? We're in, definitely, you have your quizzes, your major exam, aside from the different case analysis, okay? Then, of course, um, for the course policies, we are all aware that, of course, you have your synchronous and asynchronous, okay? Uh, it depends on our dean uh, when uh, the dean can have the asynchronous wherein you have to dwell on, you know, um, how we could able to strengthen our critical thinking <laughs> by reading or by uh, you know the comprehension on the different cases pertaining to service quality okay and of course the student should be online five minutes before the start of the class and leave the class at the end of the official class time okay in the event of disconnection due to unavoidable circumstances like fluctuating internet service connectivity or power failure students okay who were dropped from the class you know needs to re-enter the class as soon as possible the instructor has the application that monitor you know class class attendance you know if if that is not possible the student needs to inform the instructor via email or fb messenger uh, in his or her inability to rejoin the ongoing class okay and of course the success of students in the class are dependent on their active participation and engagement in class discussion throughout the semester and students are required to complete all assignments by the due date okay and of course lastly student should participate in the threaded discussion of course job i would like to encourage you to participate uh, if you don't like to you know open your mic you can use our chat box Okay, so that, you know, you can add some idea or what is your perspective on our discussion. Okay, then of course, we have here the grading system. Okay, we are all aware that one is the highest and of course, five is the failing or, you know, we can have the drop unofficially. And with regards to the, you know, grading uh, matrix, okay, with regards to the midterm and final, it composed of 40% activity reports or documentation. You can have 30%, the independent study, 10%, the attitude and behavior, 10%, and even the attendance, 10%. The total, it will be 100. Okay, then of course, we have here the different learning resources. Uh, we can have three uh, sources. We have the ebook. 
okay, the online resources, and of course, the textbook. We're in all of this you can find in our library. Okay, question, Job. <laughs> question. Sabi ni Job, ang dami naman. <laughs> Marami ba? <laughs> Sabi niya, kakayanin ba natin yan, ma'am, within summer? <laughs> huh? uh, do you have... Kakayanin that? naman po. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. You know, um, ano lang talaga, you know, have that patience and if you know what is your goal in life, you know, kahit na mahirap, at least you're able to surpass, you know? Kasi uh, it is very important also that you have a degree. You know, so that once that you already have the degree, wala nang isipin on how you can go back to school, how you could able to finish your formal education, because your main goal after graduation is just to find job, right? At the same time, how you can help your family, di ba? But yan ang ano eh, parang that will be also the, you know, as, as Filipino, you know, as Filipino, we always looking back. Okay, we always want to ano talaga help our family because we want to, you know, um uplift, okay? We want to change their life because once that you have your formal education, definitely you can buy whatever you want. Guarantee yon. And you know, um education is a social equalizer in our society. Yeah, nga, uh, I'm very grateful that you able to still pursue you know, your formal education. Kahit na sometimes we have this problem, but along the way, you know, nandun pa rin yung enthusiasm to finish your formal education. Amen. <laughs> okay, how are you pala with your organization? <laughs> how are you? Are you still, ano, parang active? In the Saan church? Po, ma In church? As church? Uh oh Oo, ma'am. Ah, Good. Okay, okay yan. You know, um, it's really a time management, right? And of course, it's nice that you have a direct connection, di ba, with our God. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, probably, siguro, we can start with our discussion. Okay, more or less, we can have one and a half hour. Okay, nakikita job. Kita po, ma'am. Oo, oh, sige. Wait lang na. Okay. Yeah, for our lesson two, okay, we have here the management principles and its components. Okay, it means that uh, for the course, you know, or for the topic learning outcomes, okay, we have here, Okay, after the end of the lesson, the student should be able to define and even explain the history of quality, the competitive advantage, the personal values, and the system's thinking. And even we have to classify and discuss the principles, the practices, and even the techniques of quality service. Diba? Medyo ano lang siya. Dalawa lang siya, pero it might be cut across, you know, with other aspects of service quality. And if you notice with the, you know, PowerPoint, we have, you know, 64 slides. <laughs> so, kakayanin natin lahat to ngayon, okay? We have to finish, okay? And of course, Job, if you have any clarification or questions, don't hesitate to ask questions or you can put your you know, uh, your ideas or your uh, perspective in our chat box, okay? Yeah, of course, to start with, we have to discuss the history of quality. Saan ba talaga nag-start, you know, ang quality? Even in the late 13th, you know, uh, century, we already have quality, you know? But of course, during those time, it's just only an informal, you know, organization. They just meet. Then because they are part of the organization, they able to come up their own policy, okay? But as time goes on, naging professionalized na siya, okay? Um, of course, in the history of quality, it starts in the quality in the media, uh, in the medieval guilds, okay? Uh, wherein it, it followed the quality management in the industrial revolution, then the quality management in the World War II, 
then followed by the quality management in the 20th century, then the development of total quality management and beyond total quality. It means that there are six stages, okay, in order to arrive na ang service quality, it might be a theory na right now. Okay, it means that, you know, in the late 13th century, we're in craftsmanship and guilds form. Okay, we're going to discuss that later one by one. Then it followed in the early 19th century, wherein there will be an industrial revolution factory system. Okay, form or organize. Then uh, in the same, you know, um, century, in the late 19th century, we're in the tailor system, you know, um, organized as well. Okay, later we're going to identify ano ba yung mga tailor system or the tailor system, okay, during the late 19th century. And in the early 20th century, there will be a quality processes and the service quality, you know, um, concept, okay, organized. Then after the two one, during the World War II, doon na po nag-start yung mga sampling and even standards because of yung dagan that they use. Di ba? Parang, of course, for the safety and security of the soldiers, it is a must that they already incorporated quality, okay, in the process, okay, in buying guns or in creating or in inventing guns, okay, during the World War II. Then after the Tuan, uh, during the, you know, 1946, you know, um, there will be also the, you know, um, the associate service quality concept that was being formed. Then after the Tuan in the mid-20th century, wherein they incorporate the company-wide quality control in Japan. Na doon na nag-start yung mga trial and error of the different philosophers na uh, when they, you know, when they studied... Um, parang when they they studied more okay on that quality na ano nila na perfect nila okay yung service quality okay in the 20th century then in the late 20th century there will be already a total quality management in the United States then of course you know right now in the 21st century we have our quality 4.0 incorporating technology in the service quality okay and of course to start with um in the quality in the medieval guilds of europe okay we're in you know the inspection committees you know uh the inspection committees enforce that the rules by marking flawless goods you know with a special mark or symbol pag may tatak okay siya Diba, ganun naman. We we able to identify pag may tatak, may brand, uh, we see to it that they go through with the process or that they able to, you know, to uh, identify that this particular uh, product and even a certain processes are being inspected. Okay? That's why the craftsmen, you know, during the medieval guilds, um, themselves often place a second mark on the goods that they produce that's why at first uh, that particular mark you know was used to track the origin of the faulty items then but over time you know the mark came you know to represent a craftsman good reputation wherein the inspection marks and even master craftsman marks serve as a proof of quality for customers throughout the medieval Europe. That's why this particular approach to manufacturing, you know, quality who are what dominant, you know, until in the industrial revolution in the early 19th century. That was the start of having quality. You know, it means that even before, you know, we already have the ideas, you know, of quality. Kaya lang, uh, as time goes on, talagang na-develop na on how we can gauge, how we can measure, how we can make an approach of service quality. Okay? 
Then, of course, we can also look into the quality in the industrial revolution. Because until the 19th century, you know, manufacturing in the industrialized world tended to follow this craftsmanship model. Wherein, you know, the factory system, you know, with its emphasis on product inspection. Ibig sabihin, di ba, alam naman natin na pag sa factory, hindi pwedeng ilabas pag hindi na meet ang isang standard. And that was already eminate before, okay, during the Industrial Revolution. And of course, it was started in the Great Britain in the mid-1750s. You know, and of course, it was grow into the Industrial Revolution in the early, in the early 1800s wherein American quality practices evolved in the 1800s as they were shaped by changes in the predominant production methods, okay? Just to have a good quality. That's why, you know, they're able to enhance the production method, the systems, and even the procedure. Okay, the next one, we have the craftsmanship. Okay, in the early 19th century, you know, manufacturing in the United States tended to follow the craftsmanship model used in the European what, countries. Okay, wherein, you know, uh, most craftsmen, you know, sold their goods locally. And each had a tremendous personal stake in meeting the customer needs for quality. That's why if quality needs, you know, were not met, the craftsman run the risk of losing customers, not easily replaced. That's why, therefore, in the craftsmanship, you know, they able to uh, the masters, you know, maintain a form of quality control by inspecting goods before sale. You know, and um, that that is also prevalent right now. Na bago tayo maglabas ng isang produkto, we see to it that there will be a certain audit that we what that we employ in our system okay how about the you know factory okay or the tailor system because uh, after the you know after the craftsman okay we have the factory system Okay, we're in a product of the Industrial Revolution in Europe began to divide the craftsman trades into a specialized task. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, of course, the, you know, the, the craftsman, okay, uh, became, you know, or it might be also become a factory workers and they force a shop owners to become, you know, production supervisors. And they mark the initial decline in employee sense of empowerment and autonomy in the workplace. That's why quality in the factory system was ensured through the skill of laborers supplemented by audits and even the inspection. That's why the defective products were either reworked or scrapped in the factory system. Okay? Then... Of course, we also look into what happened during the tailor system, okay, on how they can, you know, uh, employ quality. Okay, it means that in the tailor system, you know, um, it was developed by Frederick W. Taylor, whose goal was to increase productivity without increasing the number of skilled uh, craftsmen. Okay, we're in, in the tailor system, he able to achieve, you know, by assigning factory planning just to specialize engineers and by using craftsmen and even supervisors as inspectors and managers who executed the what engineer's plan. What does it mean? It means the tailor's approach, you know, lead to a remarkable rise in productivity. But the new emphasis on productivity had a negative effect on quality. Just to remedy this particular approach, you know, uh, the quality decline, the factory managers created inspection departments just to keep defective, you know, products from reaching customers. It means that they're able to have a, you know, stringent or a strong 
you know, um, inspection process, okay, in the Taylor system. Okay, what happened in the quality in the World War II? Okay, uh, of course, you know, um, in the quality in the World War II, after entering the World War II, the United States enacted legislation just to help gear the civilian economy to military production. And we're in, during this period, the quality became a critical component of the war effort and an important safety issue. We're in, in the World War II, you know, there will be an unsafe military equipment was clearly unacceptable. In the United States, armed forces inspected virtually, you know, every unit produced just to ensure that it was safe for operation. And this particular practice required huge inspection forces and even caused problems in recruiting and even retaining competent inspection personnel. That's why just to ease the problems without compromising product safety, you know, the armed forces began to use sampling inspection just to replace a unit-by-unit unit inspection. Of course, with the aid of industry consultants, wherein particularly from the Bell Laboratories, wherein they adopted, you know, sampling tables and even published in a military standard. And it was known yung mga marked sa barrel, yung may mga, ano, may mga uh, standard 105. And this particular mark, you know, uh, they were able to incorporate in the military contracts uh, so that the suppliers clearly understood what they were expected to produce. Okay, we're in the armed forces also helped suppliers improve quality by sponsoring training courses, you know, uh, like yung kay Walter Stewart, you know, wherein statistically quality control technique was being used in that particular inspection. Okay. How about in the quality in the early 20th century? Okay, it means that uh, Walter Stewart began to focus on controlling processes in the mid-1920s and making quality relevant, not only for the finished product, you know, but also for the processes that created. Wherein Stewart recognized the industrial processes, you know, uh, that will also yield data, wherein he able to determine the a particular data could be analyzed using statistical techniques wherein we have to see whether a process is stable and in control. And if it is, you know, affected by special causes, that should be fixed. That's why in doing a steward, it might be also laid to the foundation for control chart, wherein the modern day quality tool wherein according to you know um according to edward deming um deming is a statistician you know with the united states department of agriculture and census bureau wherein uh, became a proponent of the steward you know quality service concept method and later he became a leader of the quality movement in both Japan and in the United States. Then as time goes on, because of the different, you know, um, yung parang researches, they're able to improve on how we can really gauge and even measure uh, exemplary service quality. Okay? What else? How about the history, you know, um, of total quality in America? Okay? It means that the birth of total quality in the United States was in direct, you know, response to a quality revolution in Japan, you know, following the World War II. And there will be a major Japanese manufacturers converted from producing military goods for internal use to producing civilian goods for trade. That's why at first, Japan had a widely held reputation for a shoddy export. 
then their goals were shunned by international market. Ibig sabihin that this Japan or Japanese organization explore new ways of thinking about quality because before, yung product ng Japan nakakapasok talaga in the United States. Pero uh, during this, you know, after World War II, during 20th century, um, you know, the, the product of Japan, they are not considered quality before. But as time goes on, imagine right now, Japan, they are known for excellent quality because of this particular history of quality. Okay, then as time goes on, you know, we able to develop yung kai, yung kai Deming, Juran, and of course, the concept of Japan. Okay, we're in, uh, with regards to the concept of uh, Edwards Deming about quality, um, Deming, you know, uh, Deming, okay, um, became frustrated, okay, and with the American managers when most programs for statistical quality control were terminated once war and government contracts came to an end. Okay? Y yan yung mga frustration of Deming. That's why as time goes on, he keep on researching. He keep on observing the organization on how we could able to give service quality. Then on the part of Joseph Duran, you know, um, he, he able to predict, okay, the quality of Japanese goods would overtake the quality of goods produced in the United States by the mid-1970s. And because of that, you know, because of Japan's revolutionary rate of quality improvement, then ngayon, imagine if you uh, observe, talagang, if you want to have a quality Okay, standard or products, kailangan Japanese brand. Di ba? Parang ganun na ngayon ang lumalabas. We're in the Japan strategies, you know, represented the new total quality approach. We're in, you know, uh, they, they able to identify that Japanese manufacturers focused on improving all organizational processes through the people who used you know, it means as a result, Japan was able to produce higher quality exports at a lower prices and benefiting consumers throughout the world. Okay, yan na po ang importance of, you know, the, the history or the history of quality on Deming, Juran, and of course, the perspective of Japan. Okay, how about the American total quality management response? Okay, ano naman ang nangyari? Okay, during the American time, we're in at first, the USA or the US manufacturers held onto their assumption that Japanese success was a price related kasi they can have a lower price. Kaya nga daw siguro ang daming bumibili. Or, uh, that's why they, they will be accepted. And thus responded to Japanese competition with strategies aimed at producing domestic production cost and restricting, you know, imports. That's why, um, you know, um, of course, you know, did nothing to improve American competitiveness in what quality. That's why as years passed, you know, price competition declined while quality competition continued to increase. And of course, the chief executive officers, you know, of major U.S. Uh, corporations stepped, you know, forward to provide personal, you know, leadership in the quality movement. We're in, in the U.S. response, emphasizing not only statistics, but approaches that embrace the entire organization became known as total quality management. And several other quality initiatives followed, like, you know, we already have the ISO 9000. You know, this will be a series of quality management standards. For example, you know, we able to, you know, publish yung 1987, wherein identified the Baldridge, you know, National Quality Program, and even the Malcolm Baldridge uh, National Quality Award, which was 
uh, established by the United States Congress in the same year, wherein American companies were at first, you know, slow to adopt the standards, but eventually came on board. That's why uh, if you notice right now, majority of the companies, they go into ISO. They go into um, international standard because of quality. Okay, once that you have this accreditation or certification, it means that we able to go through with the process by an external, you know, um, qualifier or accrediting agencies. Okay. How about the, what, beyond total quality management and what happened then? Okay, as the 21st century begins, the quality movement has matured, wherein the new quality systems have evolved beyond the foundations laid by, you know, Deming, Juran, and the early Japanese practitioners of quality. And some examples, you know, of the maturation in quality management it might also include you know, most recently, you know, for example, in 2015, the ISO 9001 standard was revised to increase emphasis on risk management. Okay, it means that if you want to aim, you know, service quality along the way, there will be also some risk management happened and how we could able to overcome those, uh, you know, problem, okay, by providing service quality. And uh, during also 2000, you know, there will be also ISO 9000 series of quality management standards was revised just to increase emphasis on customer satisfaction. Ibig sabihin talagang, they able to make, you know, research on how we can improve customer service at the same time, quality. Then in the beginning in 1995, you know, the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award added a business result criterion just to measure of applicant success. And right now, even institution or higher institution can apply in the Malcolm Baldrige because of, you know, how we can give um, quality service or quality education. Kasama na po yan ang institution or higher education. And we also have the Six Sigma. You know, this will be a methodology developed by Motorola, wherein just to improve its business processes by minimizing defects, wherein it might also evolve into an organizational approach that, you know, achieve a breakthrough and even significant bottom line result. Okay, it means that at the end of the, you know, at the end of the operation, you know, once that you're able to acquire Motorola, you know, you have this kind of satisfaction. We're in quality functions deployment where developed by Dr. Yoji, you know, yung Akao, wherein he able to identify a process for focusing on customer, you know, wants or needs in the design or redesign of a product or service, wherein the sector specific versions of the ISO 9000 of quality management standards, which was also developed, you know, for such industries such as the automotive, uh, we also have the auto space or the aerospace, and even the telecommunication, and even for environmental management. It means all of this, they, they have, you know, quality or they're able to identify uh, several Okay, inspection on total quality management. Okay, and of course, we can uh, also look into that the quality have moved beyond the manufacturing sector. We're in such areas in the service, our industry, we are in the service. And even the healthcare and education and even government can go into different ISO processes. That's why the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award has added education and even healthcare, yung mga clinics, hospital, they can submit their organization into this inspection. Wherein the original categories, yung dati, na categories just focused only on manufacturing, the small business, 
you know, and even yung selected service. That's why many advocates, you know, that are pressing for the adoption of a non-profit organization or yung the category as well. That's why, you know, um, if, re if we really want to have quality, we can undergo different, you know, inspection. And in fact, it will be voluntary. Okay? Okay, and of course, to start with, okay, with our, you know, the importance of service quality, uh, service quality, you know, it might be also linked to consumer satisfaction. Did you agree, Joe, that the service quality, it might be linked to customer satisfaction? And how or what is your idea? Bakit nakalink ang service quality to a customer satisfaction? What do you think, Joe? How does the service quality can be linked to a customer satisfaction? Any idea? Mm, um, we being satisfied lang po yung customer. Depends yeah. po what in service sa kanila. Okay, exactly. It means that if you gave service quality or quality service, definitely the bottom line or the outcome will be customer satisfaction. And we have a variety of, you know, methods or protocols because once that they are satisfied, they can tell to other people that they are satisfied, right? And it will be also a domino effect, okay? If they are satisfied, they can tell to other people by the word of mouth or it might also increase the number of people who will be visiting your establishment to patronize your product. That's why service quality is a perception of the customer, it means that the customers, however, form opinion about service quality, not just for a single reference, but from a host of contributing factors. There will be a lot of factors in order to gauge service quality. You know, people, uh, you know, uh, facilities, the services, um, you know, how our uh, staff are you know, if they are hospitable or not, you know, the quality of the products that we have, the cleanliness in the room, all of this will be part of the contributing factors on how we can gauge service quality, right? That's why with regards to the introduction and the meaning of the service quality, you know, it will be also a combination of two words, the service and the quality, wherein it might also emphasize you know, on the availability of the quality services to the ultimate users. And that will be our stakeholders. Wherein, we can have a clear-cut boundary for quality. Well, you know, we can have the sky is the limit for the quality generation. Wherein, you know, scientific in, uh, inventions and even innovations can make ways for the generation of quality. That's why more frequently in innovations and we could able to identify a less gap in the process of quality with graduation or there will be a gradation, okay, in the development of what quality, okay, in our organization. That's why with, you know, with regards to the uh, goods manufacturing, you know, it is also against that, you know, in the developed countries, the process of innovation is found more frequent. And that will be part of a service quality. It means we we able to make some value proposition of our product to make more acceptable on the part of our client. It means that we keep on enhancing, we keep on developing our product or the facilities that we have in order to, you know, have that service quality or quality service in the organization. That's why, you know, the created quality shapes the boundary of expectations, okay? Since that our guests or our stakeholders, you know, tasting, Okay, or they will be able to have our accommodation wherein they're able to identify a world-class service. 
you know, they expect the same form in other organization. That's why expectations fave the avenues for satisfaction or dissatisfaction. If we succeed in fulfilling the expectations of our guests, they are found satisfied. And the satisfaction makes ways for increasing the market share. It means they that they keep on choosing your organization over the other hotels. Okay? And that will be also part of the what the market share that we have for the service quality. Okay, then of course, it is also right to mention that the service quality satisfaction is the outcome of the resources and the activities. Okay, we're in, you know, it is also open that the service quality can be broken into technical quality and functional quality. You know, for the purpose of improving the levels of quality service that we offer in the organization, the service generating organization are required to identify the reasons entailed behind mounting dissatisfaction amongst our guests or our customers and just to activate appropriate measures, either that will be technical or functional, just to minimize of how we can utilize the technical and the functional quality. Okay, with regards to the technical, you know, technical measures draw, you know, uh, draw the attention on the inventions and even the um, innovations, okay, in the field of technologies that help to improve quality of services. It means that it focuses on the use of technology or preferred to have a technology-driven service. That's why if you notice right now, you know, it's really important that any organizations they use technology to ease and to have convenience you know in checking in or just to have booking because they employ technology okay so that um we can have a comfortable and easy access on the different information that we want to know in the organization by employing technology Okay, how about on the part of the functional, you know, functional quality? Where in the functional, it also measures, you know, gravitate uh, our attention on improving the quality of services offered by the employees, which fave ways for style of functioning or even you know, work culture, how our employees, you know, extend or how they can go out of their way just to help our employees, you know, just to uh, improve the quality service in the organization. Okay, it means that in order also to have the formulation of a profitable packages, okay, wherein we can also identify yung mga pro, uh, behavioral profile, okay, of our employees and others. You know, it is a mass that our employees, they know the importance of service quality, not only on the part of the manager, but at the same time, all employees working in the organization, the, but, uh, that will be our priorities then. How we can help, how we can make our, um, you know, our stakeholders happy, you know, um, receiving our services and how our employees happy serving our guests. That's why uh, if you notice that, you know, if you have a happy employees, you have a happy clients because they know, you know, um, that's why we have to, you know, to give first, okay, satisfaction within or our employees before they can give quality service to our, uh, to our guests. That's why, you know, whatever... Uh, whatever facilities, whatever products that we have, we see to it that our employees, they, they feel first. They, they have this kind of, you know, um, uh, experience, okay, in our establishment so that they can tell to our guest or to our, you know, um, to our guest or to our stakeholders that, you know, you have the right 
experience to tell other people of what you have in your organization. Okay? Because you're the one who will tell to our guests that, you know, uh, we have a good, okay, or excellent room. Okay? And how you can encourage them that you have this kind of excellent room. If you yourself or if our employees, they don't know what will be the setup of the room. You know, they, they, they did not know or they did not feel how comfortable that your room has or your bed has. Okay? That will be also a good thing on how we can relate, you know, service quality to our employees. Okay, question, Job. <laughs> question. None so far. Po. None so far. Okay. Uh, the next one, okay, we also have to look into, you know, the frequency in the process of technological innovation, wherein the functional quality of employees can be improved by strong emphasis, you know, on behavioral you know, uh, areas such as our attitude, our service-mindedness, our accessibility, our interpersonal relation, our appearance, and even our commitment working in the organization. It means that it is a right to say that poor quality service or services, you know, failures are not designed into the system, but by the choice of the senior management, how we can really, you know, um, apply a proper way of doing service or how we can really make a process or an approach to have a good service. That's why, you know, um, maybe or probably the top management and even the senior executives, you know, should bear the responsibility of shaping the perception of service quality by promoting the use of sophisticated technologies and even increasing the number of yung mga personally committed employees okay um on how they can make their task you know um possible in the organization and this will also makes it essential that uh, service generating, you know, organization prefer to practice the principle of making things happen, you know, which focuses on quality generation. Okay. Okay, what else? Okay, uh, we have here that the service quality is generally viewed as the output of the service delivery system. Okay, it means that there will be no consensus, you know, um, in any research or if you're able to read different researches that there will be no consensus in the research community about the direction of the causality relating, you know, to quality and even the satisfaction. There will be a common assumption that, you know, service quality leads to satisfied customers. For example... You know, customers leaving a restaurant or a hotel are asked if they were satisfied with the service that they receive. If they answer no, of course, one tends to assume that the service was poor. It means that uh, direct service providers, such as the waitresses, you know, also note that the times that the best service efforts are criticized because the customer's perception of the service are you know, clouded by being a bad mood or having a disagreement with someone just before arriving at the restaurant. Okay, it means that, you know, um, uh, we, we can also recognize that the practice that influence on service quality on customer satisfaction is affected by other factors. You know, not only on the uh, at present but we can also look into the physical and the what psychological condition at that moment okay okay and at the same time you know service quality research has also achieved a truly global scope and significance that's why over you know the last 15 years research on service quality has grown uh, extensively and even substan substantively 
we're in the topic has attracted interest among managers and even researchers because of the substantial e uh, effects on customer perceptions of service quality. We're in they have on the satisfaction and loyalty of customers as well as on the brand equity. Okay, that's why you know um, it's really important to to have an idea or a deeper idea on the uh, different factors. Okay, link on the service quality. Okay, we have here the different definitions of service quality. Okay, we're in you know um, in service quality. You know uh, it might also be. Uh, you know, define that keeping in a view of the different perspective. Wherein, if we say service quality, there will be excellence, right? It means that the excellence attributes, you know, uh, that may change dramatically and rapidly. That's why excellence is often externally, you know, defined. Okay, with regards, if you're able to meet the standards with regards to your uh, services or with regards to the quality of the facilities and the, what, um, you know, the products that you have intended for our client. Okay, and the next one, we have the value. Okay, with regards to the value, it's all about the, you know, one the perception of meeting or exceeding expectations and the other stressing benefit to our recipient, okay? It means that if you are trying to look into the value for money, you know, and daming ganon, our customer, they want value for money. If they spend, you know, expensive on the accommodation, we see to it that they, they are happy, you know, spending Okay, on such particular amount. It means that we want to, you know, uh, look into if uh, they spend much, can, can the organization give what is due on that particular amount? Okay, it means that while having their accommodation in our establishment, they should be happy, satisfied, and even they, they are also pampered you know, while staying in our organization. Okay, what else? Okay, we also have the conformance to specification. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, with regards to the conformance to specification, it facilitates, you know, precise measurement. But of course, on the part of our users or our guests, you know, of a service may not or care about internal specification. But uh, we see to it that, you know, all of the procedure are in conformance with service quality. On time, abrupt, with quality, you know, all of the things, it should be precise, okay, with regards to the what uh, measurement of service quality in the organization. Okay, what else? How about meeting or exceeding expectations? You know, because expectations uh, might also change and may be shaped by experiences, you know, with other service providers. Okay, it means that if you are a type of customer or guest that you are hopping from one hotel to another, uh, supposedly you're able to compare, you know, the, the service quality of one hotel to the other. Uh, other hotel that's why you have that kind of what um expectation that's why on the part of the what establishment we always you know try to to exceed you know the expectation coming from our guests and what you're going to do and what do we expect if you are a guest it means that you know there should have an exemplary okay um you know with regards to uh, service quality. That's why most, you know, most uh, marketing, uh, most marketing, you know, and even researchers have concentrated on the different perspective wherein, uh, you know, there will be a GAPS model of service quality that will also reflect the perspective and even offers 
service organization a framework just to identify services in the form of the gaps that exceed or if we did not or or if we fail to meet the requirements what will be the customer expectation okay we're in this will be you know the different model posets the different gaps that might also reflect the descript, uh, discrepancy between the what customers expectations and even the management perception of the what expectation it means all of this these are the different gaps happened in the organization that's why all five gaps you know all five gaps may create hindrances to an organization in providing high quality service that's why the fifth gap you know what will be the fifth gap the customers expected services and perceived service delivered it means that the fifth gap is the basis of a customer oriented definition of service quality that examines you know the discrepancy between the customer expectation for excellence and their perceptions of the actual service delivered that's why with regards to the expectations uh, that are you know that are desired or expectations are decided once it means that this will extend you know to which customers believes a particular attributes which can be also essential for an excellent service provider wherein the perceptions are judged or it might be judged you know of a service performance that's why in correlation the gaps model with the concept of service quality it maintains that poor service results if the gap or the differences is large between what is expected and what is delivered that's why when what is delivered matches with what is expected wherein the customers find the service acceptable and if the service provided is better than what is expected of course you can have the exceptional service materializes that's why on the part you know when when the expectations and even perceptions are wrong on a scale you know the gap is a number reflecting the differences between the two wherein expectations ranking minus the perception ranking what does it mean if there is a poor service gap you know the minus number occurs if the number per chance is zero the service is acceptable with regards to the expectation much the perception if a positive value emerges okay like your perception uh, exceed expectations of course the service organization has achieved exceptional service in fact you know the characterization is too simplistic even a minus number may signify exceptional service that's why with regards to the definition of a service quality you know it will be presented in the different gaps you know recognizes the expectations which are subjective and are neither static or nor predictive that's why the models designers are influenced by the confirmation or disconfirmation theory which involves a comparison between the expectations and the performance that's why before using a service a customer a certain expectations about you know the organization and these expectations become a basis against the actual performance which will be compared you know in the different gaps okay that's why according to terry you know terry uh, vavra okay in the discussion of the dissatisfaction or satisfaction you know with regards to a positive disconfirmation according to he uh, according to that uh, theory or according to this uh, author you know um there will be confusing which can also prefers to use the word affirm or confirm or even the 
disconfirm just to describe the different situations like you know um like according to this author expectations are confirmed when the perceived performance meets service quality okay or the expectations are affirmed for example there will be the reinforcement by positive disconfirmation when perceived the performance exceed okay in the organization or it might be the you know the expectations are disconfirmed if they failed by negative disconfirmation when perceived performance fails a short you know uh, of providing okay service quality in the organization it means that it will be clearly that distinction also applies to service quality okay how about the concept of service quality okay it means that in the in the concept of a service quality you know doing service product design process it will be significant element you know in the service quality uh, because it will also influences the volume of demand for a given service product you know as well as the customer profile okay that will provide the service product it means that the most significant positioning tool you know of service providers and their offers on the contemporary service market it will be the service quality that's why the impact you know of service quality on profit and financial indicators of the uh, of the business performance it will be important aspect to understand the service marketing it means that you know as it affects the constant improvement of service performance by increasing market share and the profit growth it means that we have to keep in mind that service quality is a significant you know source of sustainable competitive advantage and this will yield an increase in financial result and will achieve a sustainable competitive advantage for the organization okay how about on the quality based service okay with regards to the you know quality service or quality based service it means that you know those service companies that base their strategies on quality have an excellent reputation okay it means that the feature of their quality you know poses a barrier to developing competitive copy you know or copycat marketing okay strategies it means that you know the way consumer perceive moments of truth is directly you know reflected on the evaluation of total quality service especially uh especially in you know in services whose deliveries are repeated it means that which implies a highly professional approach to moment of truth and even aimed at building and maintaining a long-term consumer relations that's why improving service quality and even building long-term consumer re uh, relations you know it also requires good knowledge of moments of truth especially um, activities that are carried you know our within okay or within the organization as well as the consumer perception that's why with regards to the you know quality based there will be also some you know focused okay or areas okay that we want to achieve quality okay with regards to the service encounters the moment of truth you know the actual okay on how you can meet our employees for example once that you enter in the establishment once that they open the door for you once that they greet you know greeted the guest once that you you know you were able to um you know once that you enter in the in the facade of the establishment it means that will be the moments of truth once that you eat their food 
once that they that you order food okay those are the moment of truth it means that you already have that perception about what service quality and even the service design the service productivity and the service providers corporate culture on how they you know how they manage okay service quality in the organization okay how they um you know translate okay their services into quality okay in the organization that's why you know without you know without the appropriate design you know or without appropriate design of service provision systems we're in the service exchange on the market is not possible as it functioning enables efficient service delivery that's why in the you know in the service design decision making the key problem is related to the choice between the service personnel and the technological support to the service delivery okay or the, the service delivery process depending on whether the service provider is focused on achieving maximum efficiency that's why if you notice in the organization we always gave you know the service on time and in a shorter span of time because that will be also tantamount to service quality that's why the main understanding of a service quality is the customer's view of service quality is connected to a certain benchmark you know, for example, if a given service can be standardized, you know, there will be a disagreement regarding the nature of service quality are mostly related to the relationship between the satisfaction and service quality. And of course, in addition to quality, satisfaction is also affected by a larger number of factors that we can encounter in the organization. Okay, how about the characteristics and the objectives of service quality? Okay, of course, there will be main characteristics of service quality, wherein, you know, the, the clients are a direct part of the process. Okay, wherein it bringing perceptions and even expectations to the transaction that become part of their interaction with you in the organization it means that once that you have a direct you know direct um communication or interaction with you that will be how the characteristics are are being formed in the organization okay what else how about the second okay unlike a manufactured product which can be made inspected and even controlled Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it means that this will be intended for quality, you know, before it is released to the client. You know, it means that service quality cannot be inspected before delivery. It will be along the way we can measure or after that our client, you know, had the reservation, had their accommodation, after that they eat our food, okay, that's the time that we can have the what we can measure if they are satisfied or not okay and of course you know because clients participate fully in the transaction it means it also includes the process for delivering that particular outcome because the way that they transact if they able to notice that we can have a short a shorter span of time they are happy they are comfortable they are convenient you know, it will be also gauged towards the outcome of the service quality. Okay, then of course, we can also look into the, you know, production environment. Okay, with regards to the production in, in delivering service, you know, satisfying clients or customers depends not on eliminating the different variances, but rather on personalizing the service quality just to have a unique you know uh, circumstances of each transaction to our guest it means that applying certain principles that are consistently 
you know, rather than providing an identical response of each transaction. It means that it is a key to delivering service quality. What is innate to that person, we can give a personalized service on that person. Hindi siya general, okay? And that will be also a good thing that we can apply to the organization. Okay, how about the next one? Okay, about client uh, satisfaction, which can be also subjective. Okay, it means that, you know, clients or guests have unique expectations based on the individual experience and even needs. That's why uh, they have their own perception of what they have received. That's why any differences between what they expected to get and what they perceive they got will affect their satisfaction. Okay, that's why, um, you know, it's really on the culture of the organization on how we can really make, you know, our service exceptional on the different needs of our client or on our um, guest. Okay. What else? How about the objectives of service quality? Okay, with regards to the objectives of the service quality, you know, by conceptualizing the quality for services is more complex, you know, uh, than for goods because of the absence of tangible manifestation. Measuring service quality can be difficult but there are possible research approaches on how we can gauge service quality. You know, there will be a comprehensive models of service quality. And of course, their limitations, okay, can be studied. And even understanding what are the different dimensions of quality that are of importance, you know, to customers or guests is not always easy on the evaluation process. But it is not you know, sufficient for companies to set quality standards in accordance with, you know, misguided assumptions of customers' expectations. It means that, you know, there will be also a further problem in defining service quality lies in the importance which customers often attach to the quality if service provider is distinct from its service offers. It means that, you know, uh, cannot be separated, you know, as readily in the case of goods. And with regards to the issues relating to setting, you know, of quality standards and even implementation of quality management can be also studied. And you can observe of what we or what will be the attitude of our, you know, clients and even our stakeholders. Okay, what else? Okay, how about on the important dimensions of service quality? That's why service marketers need to understand that, you know, all the dimensions used by clients or the customers to evaluate service quality. According to David Garvin, okay, in the article of competing on the eight dimensions of quality, be able to identify, you know, eight dimensions of quality applicable to both goods and services. But this include the performance, uh, the features, the reliability, the conformance, the durability, the serviceability, the aesthetic, the perceived quality or prestige. But in a further refinement of the different factors, identification, para zuman. You know, Zetmal and Berry have identified the following five dimensions of service quality as, you know, uh, the first one is the reliability, okay? With regards to the reliability, you know, uh, this dimension is shown to have the highest influence on the customer perception of quality. It means that it is the ability to perform the promised service dependably and even accurately, okay? It means that, you know, um, for example, uh, if you are aware about the Sahara Airlines, 
you know, Sahara Airlines, an upcoming domestic air carrier, okay, within India. Okay, it means that have been striving to protect itself as a reliable airline. Okay, then it hopes to differentiate itself from other airlines or other airlines in India, okay, or Indian airlines. Just to protect their reliability, Sahara Airways has a scheme of full refund plus a coupon of 3,000 rupees to every passenger on delay of flights by more than 59 minutes. And that will be how we can conform reliability. That's why when service delivery fails, you know, the first time, the service provider may get a second chance to provide the same service in the phase called recovery. Wherein, you know, the expectations of the customer are usually higher during the recovery phase than before because of the initial failure. Thus, you know, the service provider is likely to come, you know, under a greater scrutiny, thereby, you know, increasing the possibility of customer dissatisfaction, wherein the reliability dimension, which ensures timely delivery, you know, uh, timely de uh, delivery time after time. It might also help the service providers, you know, to meet the customer expectations fully at the lowest level of service expectation. And that will be the importance of, you know, reliability, okay, in the organization. Okay, the next one, we have the responsiveness. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, with regards to the responsiveness, in fact, you know, each customer, you know, may have problems of his or of her own. While the front-end employee may also have been trained or required to deliver a standardized service to the customers who want, you know, to go beyond uh, their limit. You know, it means that it is the willingness to help the customer or willingness to go that extra distance that is responsiveness. Okay, for example, okay, for example, a customer calls room service just to find out if they would pack a, um, yung hain, okay, or Jane lunch, okay, it is not just hotel's normal policy to cook such specialty and customized meals. However, you know, the customer being very religious-minded would be very pleased if the hotel could pack, you know, for them to carry and eat. This may impose some strain on the kitchen. However, the hotel may be rewarded in two different ways if it agreed to provide the meal. The customer may be very pleased with the service and is very likely to recommend the hotel to his or her friends and acquaintances. In addition to this, the hotel could be charged extra commensurate with the extra efforts. He is unlikely to mind paying more. And the second aspect of responsiveness is the speedy response to a customer request. You know, when response is delayed, customers usually lose interest. And many sales representatives respond on the phone. I will call you back. Di ba? Palaging sinasabi, I will call you back. Then the call is never returned. It means that the customer draws his or her own conclusion about quality of service he is likely to receive in the future. And that will be part of the responsiveness. You know, we always be on time, you know, um, having a decision. Okay? How about for the assurance? Okay? How about for the assurance? Okay, for the assurance, it refers to knowledge and courtesy, 
you know, of the service firms or organization employees and their ability to inspire trust and even confidence in the customer towards the company. It means that the assurance dimension is considered vital for services that involve high risk, you know, as customers may not be able to evaluate all the uncertainties involved in the process. It means, for example, you know, medical services requiring complex and common procedures, sales or purchase of financial securities, investment issues, legal affairs, and others. It means that it might demand the service quality dimension. There are property developers or builders who provide a list of previous buyers of flats or apartments to potential buyers. It means that the evaluation of construction services is beyond technical capabilities of most buyers. However, you know, the prospective customers are free to call the previous customers when prospective customers hear from them about the companies and its satisfactory delivery. It means that they feel assured and develop a more positive attitude towards the company because somebody who already felt and they have an experience about your company. That's why if you are a new you know, um, guest, you are already feel assured that you can also get the same you know, happiness and satisfaction what was the other customers had because of that assurance okay how about for the empathy okay probably uh, we can finish and uh, up to dimension five how about for the empathy okay empathy okay it's all about caring you know individualized attention the service firm provides each customer it means that when a service provider puts himself in the shoes of the customers, he may see the customer's viewpoint before or better. Okay? It means that the customers feel that the provider is making the best effort to see their viewpoint. It may be good enough most for the employees or for the organization to do empathy. Okay? For example... You know, a lady customer with a young child arrives slightly late, you know, at the check-in counter and requests the agent for, for a seat along the aisle and near the toilet. It means that even if all such seats have already been taken up, you know, the agent and the airline may, may make even effort to request another passenger to exchange seats and even meet the customer demand it means that the lady that the lady passenger you know would be delighted if her request could be honored and granted despite the last minute checking in and even if does not get such seat that would be grateful for their effort because of that empathy because of the initiative that you have Okay, what else? And lastly, we have the tangible. You know, with regards to the tangibles, uh, this will be, you know, refers to a physical facilities or even equipment or even the appearance of our organization and our employees. It means that the job of the tangible and the physical evidence of a service is multifunctional. What does it mean? For example, you know, when a patient in the waiting room of a clinic sees the doctor's certificate, he becomes aware of the quality of service he is about to receive. If a dental clinic provides patients with a clean rubber footwear and even uh, freshly laundered bibs or coats before the actual service, the patient and their accompanying, you know, relative or friends will be impressed. It means a dentist dressed in a spotless white coats are likely to impress, you know, even further. That's why tangible provide the customer's proof 
of the quality of service and where we can find this one in the in the um, hospitality operation you know cleanliness in the room um how our staff you know wear an appropriate uniform you know it should be iron uniform there will be no spotless you know um even yung the uniform can be also a different color it's not they should have a proper appearance okay it means the totality on the entire okay uh entire operation of the organization of how our guests see the or organization that's why there are some guests that are very particular on cleanliness the way we arrange the you know the towel in the bathroom okay mga spotless okay or yellowish linen okay and others it means that all of this will be particular on tangible of what we see okay in the actual accommodation that we have okay question any any question <laughs> um job are we still around <laughs> Are we still yes, around? And dami, no? And dami. <laughs> Nabigla pa yung utak. <laughs> Nabigla ba? In fact, wala pa tayong kalahate. <laughs> okay. Any questions po? Any question, Job? Yeah, uh, probably you can read the case study. Okay, that was being uploaded by the dean. Kindly read. And I hope you can be also motivated reading that case study. Okay, and see you on Friday. Okay, for the discussion of our case study. Thank you so much, Job. And thank you, see you soon. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, for, thank you. Okay, for. Mm -hmm.